So you've made the decision to move to Manhattan, Kansas, but you want to know the good and the bad. Well, in this video today, we're going to go over the bad or the six downsides to living in Manhattan, Kansas. What's going on, everybody? Kyle Powers here with Haven Real Estate Group at Keller Williams One Legacy Partners. K-State grad, turned contractor, turned real estate agent and investor. First off, if you haven't done so already, go and hit that subscribe button, go and hit that little bell so you get notified of any future content and give us that like because it helps us out with the channel. We're gonna jump right into it. Today, we're gonna go over the six downsides of living in Manhattan, Kansas. I know this is not gonna be a happy video, if you will, or anything along those lines, but I wanna kinda get to it because I wanna be honest with you guys. I wanna be honest with you as the viewers. I wanna be honest with uh, my clients and I wanna be, so that you know what you're getting into before you actually move to Manhattan. So uh, if you are considering a move to Manhattan, please give me a call, give us a shout, get, uh, reach out to me via phone number or, or via phone call or uh, shooting out with an email, whatever we need to. So just reach out, we can get you taken care of. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Number one, I'm gonna kind of put this one on, it is, a, it is kind of a negative, however, I can kind of spin it to be a positive, but the lack of a professional sports team. And I say that lightly because we do have the D1 school uh, with K-State here. So we've got uh, the D1 sports and everything else involved with it. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that's a big plus for me. Um, but the lack of a professional sports team, we don't have professional uh, baseball, we don't have professional football, we don't have those big time uh, attractions as, as far as that stuff goes. Uh, now. That being said, you are very close to them. I mean, you're about two, two and a half hours away from uh, Kansas City where you can jump in to watch the Chiefs game, watch the Royals game, and then you can actually go out to, I think, I think they still have it, but I know that Salina used to have a semi-pro uh, football team and a couple semi-pro baseball teams as well. So those are all there as well. Uh, but those are some lines. Number one is kind of a downside to it is the lack of a professional sports team. Number two, uh, coming from a small city, small town, this really doesn't make a big difference for me, but I know coming from a larger city and larger uh, towns, what you will kind of find is that the lack of public transportation. We don't have the subways, we don't have the trolleys, we don't have all of that stuff running constantly that you can kind of jump on and, and get to work and whatnot. You have to have a vehicle or be willing to ride your bicycle uh, a long ways to get to it. Uh, now we do have a, um, we do have the, I call it the ATA bus. It's the ATA uh, buses that run around town and there's a lot of good, good going on with those. So I do appreciate what the city and what our public transportation is for that. But that's all that we really have outside of Uber or Lyft or taxis or anything like that. So. That's one of the ones that I would say is, uh, is kind of a big one, is lack of public transportation. And again, I'm not saying that our town's so big that you can't ride a bike, because you can, just during the cold when it gets to, like it was last year, negative 20 degrees, probably gonna wanna be inside something. <laughs> so number two on our list is lack of public transportation. Uh, and that one in my mind is kind of a bigger one. Number three on our list is lack of professional slash adult nightlife. And I bring this one up, I bring this one up because this is a big one for a lot of people that I've talked to throughout the years, throughout the, when I, I was getting ready to make this video, one of the biggest things that they didn't like was that there's not really much to do unless you want to go to the bars and go hang out with the college kids, which don't get me wrong, there's a time and place for that, but that's not always where I want to go. I don't want to be going to a dance club, um, Tubby's downtown, which is great but not, where, not my scene when I want to go sit down and relax, have a drink and hang out with friends and my wife and enjoy ourselves uh, and getting some nice dinner. Now, I will tell you, we are trying, there's, a, there's some people trying to uh, kind of bolster points area, which is what I consider our professional Aggieville. Um, and they're doing some, they're doing some good things. So you've got Manhattan, I think it's Manhattan, but there's a, there's an ax throwing place down there. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants down there. So there's a lot of good going on down there, but outside of really going to the bars and going out to eat, there's not much that you can really get into, um, you know, much nightlife things that you can do after the job, after work or, or anything that way to kind of enjoy. So that's one of the things that my wife and I, outside of going out to eat and, and, and 
relaxing and whatnot, that's kind of where we lose that. We don't have, you know, we have golf courses, but we don't have like uh, top golf. We have uh, movies, but we don't have like a major movie theater kind of thing. We do have a new one that does have dinner and movies and all that kind of stuff. So there's just a little bit, you run out very quickly as far as the adult nightlife piece of it goes. Now again, it just depends on what your cup of tea is. If you're fine with driving to Kansas City or Wichita or anything like that, there's a lot of stuff to do there as well, but it's not something you're gonna do after five o'clock on a Tuesday night kind of thing. So number three on our list is the lack of professional nightlife or adult nightlife. Again, there's plenty of nightlife down in Aggieville, which you can go to the bars and go hang out with college kids and feel young again until the next morning. But number that's number three on our list. Number four, if you've watched my videos, this one comes up a lot. Uh, number four is construction, the road construction. Finally, we've it's been coming up a lot here recently, but the road construction seems to be nonstop. Everything is a literally at one point in time, I think I said this in one of my other videos as well, but at one point in time, we were quite literally, um, the three main roads going across town, all of them were shut down, or at least down to a one lane. I shouldn't say shut down. They were down to a one lane. It's like, come on, do a little bit more stacking at that point instead of just jamming it all to one. And then there's quite literally just traffic jam every single time that you wanna get across town between eight and nine and five and six o'clock at night. So it's just, it's just so rug construction is a big one right now. That's a big one that is on everybody's mind this year. Um, they literally just shut down uh, Kimball, which is like one of the biggest throughways um, for the for the year. And it's down for, it's gonna be down for a year, year and a half. Again, I will say this, thank you. If anybody from the city is watching this, thank you for taking care of the streets. I do appreciate that but it's just one of those things where road construction is a lot right now. And so that's that's a big one on most everybody's mind. So whenever I was pulling, that's one of, the, one of the things that they kept coming up with. Number five on the list is the lack of conventions or live music or events and things like that. Um, I will tell you, if you go down to like Kent City Power and Light, there is live music all the time. There are events all the time, the rodeo and all that kind of stuff all the time. Well, being Manhattan, we do have kind of a smaller community base to it. Um, you know, we do have a lot of, um, we do have a lot of red dirt country coming into some live music and stuff, but it's not the big names. You know, you don't necessarily get, we had Eli Young band here a long time ago. They haven't been here in a while because they're big names. They don't necessarily need or want to come back to Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, we had Zach Brown here for a while at one point in time too. Um, but they don't necessarily come back. We don't have those, the venues can't hold it anymore. So that's kind of the, the big thing with that. Um, so the live music, lack of live music kind of stinks a little bit. That'd be, that kind of plays into the lack of adult nightlife to do. Um, everybody that's the country musics or, or concerts or anything that way, it's more geared towards the up and comers, which is great because we get to see um, when I was in college, I got to see Eli Young Band before they were Eli Young Band. Randy Rogers Band, that was another one. I know some of us might not make any sense to people if you don't watch, listen to country, but... Um, so anyway, so that's where the lack of conventions. I know that we have some stuff here and some conventions and whatnot here, but we don't have the big expo centers. We don't have the big uh, stuff that we do, um, that you do get in a bigger city. So you're doing a trade-off is really what you're getting. That's a lot of what this list is is that there's a trade-off from living in a small city versus living in a big city, you know, Manhattan versus Kansas City type, type of living. So those are some of the big trade-offs that we're gonna continue to have and you'll see in this list. Um, but anyway, so that's number five is the lack of live music, conventions, events, things like that. Heck, we don't even have Country Stampede anymore, which was a big one for us. Unfortunately, the way all that handled was um, they are no longer coming back to Manhattan, at least as of right now, unless something changes. So. Um, but yeah, so number five is a lack of lack of those items. Number six, uh, number six on the list is probably gonna get me in trouble with a couple people, um, but I wanna be honest about it and that's what I'm looking for for you guys as, as my viewers. Um, number six is the student population. If you're a townie, if you're a local here, one of the best times in town is during the summer. I loved it when I was in college and I was one of these kids. Um, but the population drops considerably. You don't have the, uh, you're not worrying about the 
um, going out to eat, you're not worrying about and being in line for 20 minutes because there's a bunch of college kids in front of you. Or you're not worried about the, the 18 year old drivers that just got their license and are coming to Manhattan to, to enjoy themselves and relax and have fun. Um, and you're not necessarily dealing with a lot of that stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, having the student population is what makes our city thrive. Um, during the year, in small businesses, you're getting a lot of people going in and, and uh, buying your you know, uh, smoothies or buying your restaurant, food at the restaurants or buying stuff at your shop or that stuff. So don't get me wrong, the student population is amazing, but there's also that towny piece of me that's like, meh. I can take it or leave it at this point in time. So, um, but anyway, student population is always a big one. And that's where people that live here, that's where they see a lot of that. And that's what a lot of people have said is when they come back to school or is, is kind of when it's kind of a stressful time for that one. But also when they're leaving for the summer or leaving for the winter, it's like, oh, take a breath of fresh air a little bit, you know? Um, but that's all right. It's all part of living in Manhattan. It's all part of having the fun of our beautiful small town here and, and enjoying it. So. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the list, I appreciate you checking out the channel. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, help us out with the channel. Uh, and then if you want, share it with some friends and family. If anybody is looking to make a move or even moving out of Manhattan, uh, reach out to me. I can't say this enough. I want to help. I want to help you buy or sell a house. I want to get you taken care of. I love this town. I love being here. I've raised, I'm raising my family here. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. So. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video and we'll see you next time.